So, I heard you want to be a 3D artist, but it requires money for school, software and skills? Now nah, let me find you an alternative. I'm still Thomas, a professional generalist artist, and today we are going to see the essential tools to be able to model everything in Maya. And this is part of our series where I will show you anything you need to know to get your first job in the VFX industry starting from zero. Let's start with enthusiasm and see the basic stuff while creating a fork. <clears throat> okay, first, you have to gather references. If you find blueprints including top, back and side views of the model you want to create, that's the best. If you can't find a blueprint with all views, make it yourself or gather as many references as possible. You can for example just align a side view and a top view of an object in Photoshop and that could be enough. But remember, the more room for interpretation you will have, the greater are the chances to make mistakes. Creating from zero requires experience. We are working on a new project, so let's not forget to set project. You don't know how to do that or you need to refresh your memory. Then have a look at my last video where I showed you everything on the subject. Okay, let's import our blueprints. You can press space to have access to multiple view in Maya. In our top view, for example, let's go on view, image plane and import image to import our reference. Let's do the same for the side and I will just translate it to avoid messing with the center of the world. If you just put your mouse cursor on one of the view and press space again, you go in full view of the view you just put your cursor on. You can press 4 on the numeric pad to see the wireframe, 5 will be the shading and 6 will be the shading with texture if you have texture. As seen in my previous video about the Maya basics, this is a vertex, a face and an edge. If you hold shift, you can select multiple components and the opposite if you hold control, you can unselect multiple ones. Now, let's say you want to select a full loop of align component. You can just select one and then double click on the next one in the line to select the full loop. I will even show you a faster way in another video as well. To finish on the useful selection tips, holding tab will activate a brush for selecting new component. Ok, time to start. Let's create a cube and play with the vertices to match our fork in both side and top view. If it bothers you and you want to make the grid disappear, you can just click here. The first important tool will be the split tool. He is splitting polygon faces to add divisions. Here for example, I am adding edge loop by holding control and just press left click. I am doing that to refine the shape of my fork closer to the references. You can add a precise edge loop in the middle of two edges with a control and middle click. Let's select two faces. Remember what we learned last time, just hold right click, select face. And let's see our second important tool, the extrude tool. But wait, 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 are you still selecting tools in the shelf? Nah, let me show you an alternative. For example, with the extrude, if you use the translate tools while holding shift, you are doing an extrude already. Another possibility working for all tools will be while selecting something, just hold shift and hold right mouse this is the marking menu and here you will have all the main tools. You can also do operation on selection, transform selection, this kind of thing. My friend's side is always complaining about Maya, but this is actually a very useful feature. Okay, back to the extrude tool, extrude the face in the desired direction and let's see three important options with this tool. The first one will be the board and object switch for moving it the world or object direction. Then there is the offset to offset the area of the face selected. And the last one, why not, is the keep face together option. If you select multiple faces, this detach them and allow you to extrude them separately. Okay, catch your breath because while we are at it, let's see other essential too. The target world merge two vertices together. 
the combine combines two objects together. Separate is the opposite of this one. Fill holes, guess that, fill holes. Another one will be slide edge. That just allows you to move edge on the surface by dragging with the middle mouse button. Last few really useful things to do to increase your speed. The first one will be the symmetry. Working with symmetry reduces your work time by at least two and more if you are smart with it. There is the constraint that can help you a lot as well. There is two type of interesting constraint. First one will be the selection wall that allow you to do different type of selection. And the other one will be to constraint by object that allow you to move component without being able to go outside their edges or surface. When you are a bit advanced in the modeling step, don't forget to press 3 on the numeric pad. This activates the smooth mode. Our model is now disgusting, but it has to work in both normal view and smooth view. You will have to trust me here, as I will explain why in a video about rendering. But super shortly, this is because in 19% of the cases, we want to render a smooth model. Anyway, to make it beautiful, we need to add subdivisions where we want to have sharp edges instead of smooth and one. You can add division yourself or you can let our last really useful tool to the job for you is the bevel. You will have to select the full edge loop that you want sharp, then do a bevel and it will allow you to add edges around the selection. You can add more while playing with the segment option and make them closer to each other with the fraction option. The closer they are to each other and the sharper your edge will be. You can already spot a big problem. We have a face with five vertices. You may think about connecting it here and then you have a triangle instead. But look what happened when I had a shiny material on our model. This is really not looking good. It is not the only problem. How can I do this detail that can be just a simple extrude but with my actual topology I can do a clean loop around my fork. And nothing is homogeneous. I have rectangle instead of beautiful square. Every one of this issue and many more will be solved in our part 2 where I will show you everything about topology and that will come out next weekend. Combining with what you just learned today, you will be able to model almost everything. And like me, you will learn new tools, new shortcuts and new workflow by practicing. So no need to ingest theory all day. Try practicing and find new issues that you will overcome by learning a new method. We are not a lot currently on the channel. That means I can listen to every one of your recommendations. How was the video? Too short? Too fast? Was it entertaining? Let me know and I will correct the many one to come. But don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the evolution. And in any cases, do not worry. With hard work and dedication, you will find success in your passion, regardless of natural talent or expensive degrees. So stay motivated. <laughs>